All right, guys, we are back for match three with our uh, MSCS deck. We were one and one currently. We uh, lost our first match to two dragons. Uh, definitely a bad start, but I think our deck is very good, and we crushed the other match. So we'll see if we can get the 4-1 and get into top eight. Uh, some 3 twos top eight, but that's not the plan. The plan is definitely to 4-1. I will say we are having a bit of technical difficulties right now, and by that I mean I am double queuing, because I thought I had more time between rounds. So I probably just going to do this and my apologies i'm quite the amateur at videos so there's going to be a bit of double q here we're uh actually i mean we might be dead this death touch is really good against this we can f try to find 10 the pass that's what we're looking for but we're kind of we're, we're like a wacky four color black deck uh we have a bunch of learn cards for this to get the planes but we're, we're not finding it right now so don't really have attacks in this game and then the other more interesting game is over here and hasn't started yet. So maybe this game will lo I'll lose this game quickly. They have Crackle with Power in their deck, which they killed us with game one. Game two, we boarded in our Splash Test of Talons on one island and one Quandrix campus, and it was good. So <clears throat> we'll see. Uh, this is a snap keep. This hand's awesome. Definitely not mogging it. Oh, I'm a little nervous. There's like so much at stake here. The first prize is $20,000. This is not exactly chump change, so it's a pretty big deal. Um, so I could just stop the 4-4s. Four I could also just not. I think I'm probably just supposed to not. Because I have blockers, kind of. But, I mean, this is really good, too. God, I almost I almost want to concede this game out of respect for my viewership. Because they didn't come to watch this. They came to watch this. So, uh, let's just make sure we don't have 6. They chose to play, obviously. I was like, if they put you on the play and you have 6 through your... Or if they put you on the play after, like, winning the die... Or winning the, the selection... And then you F6 through your turn. It's the worst feeling in the world. So always look at where it says turn one. Because I would hate that. I would hate that so much. But that's not what's happening here. Um, you know, I, I guess we just do this in this game. But I'm really tempted to just concede. Because I don't want to be rude to my viewers. <laughs> but I made the mistake. Uh, yeah, we're not going to play Shock until you'll do this. We're not going to Divine, uh, divine Gamut on turn two no matter what. But we don't need to, like, Shock. Because we don't have any other red one drops, so... They have creative outburst in hand. I'm, I'm just gonna concede. I'm just gonna concede. I'm not dead to creative outburst. Their hand is probably like they're definitely winning. But let's just see how he would have drawn. Useless, cultivate, find white. Yeah, could have been a game, but whatever. I want to give you guys the match that I promised. So, um, anyways, I guess we just pass. We don't have to cast first day of class immediately. We could, but it like the the ability to get counters on something is not irrelevant. Assuming we have nothing else to do. If they play a 3-2, we're just shocking it. Like a Blood Researcher? Okay, that's not quite the 3-2 we want to shock, but we could do so. I mean, it's not it's not terrible. Could also try to Gambit it. We're not going to Gambit it now, though. It's a big decision, actually, because it's very easy for them to get this back. What, what would we first day of class for? Don't really want anything yet, honestly. I guess we just, like... Shock it, play Mentor, and then they can just get it back, and it's like a really slow, grindy card. The thing is, it hits like a truck, too. Like, it hits really hard. So we want to Gambit this, but we also, like, don't want to do it now. Uh, this is, like, already a hard decision. I wish they just played Blood Researcher. If they played Blood Researcher, we just shock that and, like, feel really good about ourselves. So we could get this, which is a joke. We don't want to do that to a 3-mana three 3-drop. Three we could illuminate and just discard our hand and make a 3-2, but our hand's not bad. We don't need to do that yet. We have Sciences to go get our Black Splash, which is usually the first order of business. Uh, Spirit Summoning's okay. This is fine, but this trades with this. See, this card trades with everything. It trades up. <clears throat> Maybe I just want to shock it for Tempo. I'm going to try shocking it for Tempo. They don't have that many cards that uh, die to shock anyways. We'll see if we regret that. It could end up being a big mistake. And I think we just play the Mentor and... Just play a Mentor Pass. This is a 3-3 blocker. Plus we get to scry off this next turn when we play it and hit the Shock. Uh, we'll see if we regret that Shock. There's definitely like, definitely a scenario where we regret it. They just gain a lot of life. The board stalls out. We end up having to Gambit this, so we discarded our Shock. Or they play Blood Researcher or something, and then it's like, wow, we could have Shocked that instead. But, let's see what's going on. Okay, so they just sack this. They're not getting the 2-for-1 or anything. It's just an Edict. Is that their whole turn? Yeah, that's their whole turn. Oh, that's really good. It's an excellent draw. So I think we just draw the, we just play the Phoenix, go get the Elemental Summoning for a 5-5. Five five. We're going to attack them, obviously. We're not going to play around anything. 
Uh, just have to wait for it to resolve. We could also first day of class the Phoenix back when it, like, if we'd like, and it would come as a 3-3, which is pretty cute. So, we'll see how aggressive we could play this game. We don't want to Divine Gambit until they're mostly out of cards. Uh, we could look at, like, what Black Green has. Bookworms, Bookworm is the main Nightmare scenario, because we're not going to know their hand. Like, we don't have any sort of Test of Talents type card. We have Test of Talents at our pool, but we're not playing it. So, you know, we're not going to know exactly what they have. We definitely want to go get the 5-5, five five, I think. What do they They're killing this? Okay. That's fine. I mean, we still draw a card. Wait, I can apply the replacement effect. I could just get the Phoenix itself back. <laughs> Wait, really? <laughs> I think I should do that. I think I should do that, actually. Right? I could just learn itself back. I mean, is a 5-5 five five better than this? Probably not. Okay, let's just attack with it. Whatever. I want to keep my Phoenix. That's funny. I've never actually seen that, where they kill it with the trigger on the stack, we get it back. It could be a bait, where they're just like, I'm assuming that his learn spells are better than Phoenix. But we have a learn card in hand, so if we draw Silver Coal Command, we can just get a uh, Black off it. Go get Sciences or something. But they also might have missequenced there. I probably would wait till after the learn, if I was like knowledgeable about that interaction, because, you know, I have the choice. Like, even if they want me to keep the Phoenix, they're giving me the choice. Like, if I know that I don't want to keep the Phoenix, I just wait for the ability to resolve, and then, you know, go get 5 mana 4-4 four, four or something, but... I could just get that off this. Uh, I'll probably just play Tome Shredder as a 3-3 and then attack with it, assuming they don't do anything. Their hand is, like, pretty interaction-heavy. They have the tribes. They don't really have much else. God, I need water. I'm going to be right back one second. Okay, I'm back with the water. I'm in my pajamas and my Oko Pro Tour shirt. Uh, I might just edit this part out of the video, actually. Depends on how professional I feel. Like, I could edit the double Q bits out. Um, I'm kind of unprofessional, honestly. I literally just started streaming and making videos. So, thank you for your patience. I think the gameplay is good, though. The commentary is good. So, that's the most important part. Uh, anyways, they are doing exactly what I was doing. They are nervous as hell. This is an important tournament, and they want to get all the equity they can. So I don't blame the one bit for taking their time, but I don't know what their hand is. Uh, I guess it's Threat Light. Like, it's definitely Threat Light. I mean, if they play Brew like that, it's because they can't set up the favorable Pest Exchange. So, so far, the Shock has worked out on the Trudge. It's very good tempo. Like, this card, it costs two to get back. It enters tab. So if we end up pressuring them and they need to get this back for a blocker, it's pretty poor. But where it's really good is if we can't pressure them at all. Like, our hand was decent pressure. We had a Mentor, we had a Tome Shredder, we had some removal. And then we drew the Phoenix, which is excellent, because our deck is just, you know, we have like four rares in red-white, so our deck is very good. But, uh, they can also just AFK ten minutes, and then this is just me talking to myself, and we win the game, which I don't mind either. No, they're not. Okay. Amplomancer, pass. Sure. So we drew the Eliminate, so we need to go get black if we're going to play this Eliminate. Uh, I don't really want to get black that much otherwise, but we probably should just do that so we don't have a dead card. <clears throat> Because then we have land six, but we have a scry land, so lands aren't dead. You can also just go get another threat and let this sit there for a while, but don't think that's what we want. I think we do just want the uh, environmental sciences. We can try to push through their creatures with Tome Shredder and stuff like that. And if we end up flooding out, we have the campus. We'll just be campusing over and over again with cheap removal and trying to scry into our five drops, which will surely overpower him if we can find them on time. Uh, they have three spells in hand, they missed a land drop, so... I mean, alternatively, we could just say that, like, you know, uh, we don't want to do this because... <clears throat> you know, uh, no, I'm going to just do it. This makes sense. Get environmental sciences, play the Tome Shredder, it enters with a counter because of the first day of class, and then we just attack. If they have a combat trick, that's unfortunate, but most people don't play combat tricks. Yeah. We're not going to use the ability, we'd rather just attack. So they're going to 13, probably. If they block the Tome Shredder, it's because they have big play or something in their main deck, and that's unfortunate, but... I don't really care. I mean, I care a little. Like, I don't prefer it, but I don't think the attack is incorrect. So, 
Uh, if it does die, though, if it dies like that, our hand's a lot worse, I will say. So it's a little risky. We could have just, like, played as a 3-3, attack for 2, kept it back, 4-4, four, 5-5. Four, five, five. Yeah, because the card is very large. But I just don't think they have it. Like, I wouldn't play big play in limited most of the time. I'd play it with, like, Karox or something. So they could have it. But I don't think they did this to big play. I think they just did it because they don't really have much else going on. I don't know. I hope they don't have big play. <sighs> okay, good. They don't have big play. See? So, just... You know, sometimes you should consider combat tricks, but you don't have to always live in fear that they always have it, because I don't think that's true. I don't know what they have. What is this? Four mana? <clears throat> yeah, that's fine. So it was dead anyway, so we got free damage off it. Yeah, there's the land. So we could end up flooding, but not, not a cause for concern yet. We have the campus, so we're not just dead. Go get the swamp. Probably end up eliminating this. We'll try to blow it up in response to like a mage duel or an activation or something, depending on what their threats are. Uh, we want to be careful with this. We might end up casting it soon, but we just have to consider the possibility that their last card in hand is Bookworm or something equally disastrous. So we'll wait for something very large before we cast it. If we can get them Hellbent, that's even better. Like just get them with no cards in hand. Uh, I hope they just play a little faster too, because I, I am nervous as hell, man. This is a lot of money. A lot of money, it's good prestige, it's everything, everything I went out of magic. But, you know, if this is like a, uh, if this isn't me winning, it's still going to post it. I mean, I didn't owe two drops, so that's really all that matters. I'll post all the rounds. Uh, they don't have a way to gain life yet for the trudge. Yeah, so we just play the swamp. Attack for two. We're winning the race. We have a recursive flyer as well. It's not directly recursive, but it's recursive with learn, which is probably good enough. Like, I think a 2-2 flyer might be better than... Most spells I would get off learn. If they have nothing, they're going to pump here. Probably not going to pump here, though. I don't think we eliminate this unless they pump. Yeah, just take two. Sure. See, that's like a better card to eliminate. But we don't actually need to eliminate it now. We can just do it next turn. If we draw a land, I mean. Okay, that's very good. So we just attack, and we play the Archaic, and we pass with Eliminate open. And then we get to, yeah, we have Eliminate for Mage Duel and stuff. <clears throat> This card's very annoying. Big big fan of this card. Like they might just have a kill spell. They might just go like land four, mages, pay for two. But if they don't, like this is like they're kinda of landlight too. They've been missing a land drops. So this this card's just like a huge brick for them if they plan on casting anything that's not a uh, creature. So Um I'll probably just let it hit me. I was having nightmares about like snakeskin bail or something. I don't think that's what it is, but I don't really care. Pretty healthy. I want to see what the last card in their hand is. Biblioplex put Mage Hunters on top. Yeah. So unfortunately this will die. Okay, that's extremely good. So I think we just probably have lethal, right? Well, let, let's just attack with both. So that, that's just an insane draw. So we've been drawing much better after the first match. So we just attack with both. If they double block, we have eliminates. Uh, we can lore hold command in response to save our archaic, which we certainly want to do because the archaic is super good. And it's just going to like, you know, it's very annoying for them to deal with. We have lightning helix. We have all kinds of shit. Like our, our hand is just insane now. Uh, we're not going to cast this because one of the few ways we lose is their last card is bookworm. So we, we just don't need to cast the card. I don't want to take the risk. It's a pointless risk. Just assume they have it. If you don't, you know, if you're, if you have a good hand, don't, don't give yourself a chance to lose. There's no other way to lose this game. Yeah. So that's fine. Uh, they just take the damage. So yeah, now they're gonna mage. They're gonna mage it. They think we're just flooded out, which in a sense we are, but not really. <clears throat> and then we, yeah, we just. They're gonna pay for it. They're gonna pay two. We're gonna indestructible and make a three-two or something. Or indestructible. Actually, we'll indestructible and lightning helix. How about that? I think it just starts with eliminating this, then. Yeah, and we just take two, and then they mage duel, and then we make a 3-2 and give it indestructible, and we just can't lose. So we'll let that trigger resolve. Great a three, yeah, great. 
All right, so they're dead. Just dead on board. Just have to let, they have to let us attack. They might just do it for time, or they could just concede now. I don't really know. But they're, they're just dead as hell. We would play this too. We had a really good hand. Uh, we would not have Divine Gambited there. We'd Divine Gambit next turn. But <clears throat> So we've seen their deck. They have Life Gain. They have the Leech Fanatic. So the Life Gain is relevant. That's how they get the, the Trudge back. Shock looks very good. They have th they have four creatures that die to Shock. So we're definitely keeping Shock in. They have Deadly Brew, Lash, and Mage Hunters. I'm just going to take a screenshot of their deck. But... I'm just going to eat this oatmeal. It's been sitting here since the morning. Or morning for me is noon, by the way. But whatever. That's when the tournament started. I slept in really well because, you know, I want to be well-rested for this. And I'm still jittery, though. Like, I'm not jittery when I play ladder. I'm not jittery when I play PTQs. I am jittery when I play M MOCS. So, no misplays, though. No uh, no Kelpie misplays like yesterday where I, you know, ran into an onboard trick. Nothing like that. We've been playing very solid magic so far. Uh, I wish they would just let us kill them. But, you know, if this goes to game three, uh, this is very good for me. I like that they're using their clock. We could play a really long game two that we lose, and then game three we could win the clock. And the thing is, we're not laming them out. We're not doing anything deceptive to make them take so much time. You know, it's not us. We're, we're ready to end the game, and they're the ones tanking over, you know, nothing while they're tapped out. They could be writing down our deck. I think I think it's better to just take a screenshot, throw it up in a paint, and put it on the other monitor. Uh, you should have two monitors, by the way. It's high EV. But... You know, that, that's what I would do if they're trying to, you know, get max information. Because the match isn't over. It's just game one. They could win both the other games. But this is a great start. And all we have to do is not F6 through a combat. If we did F6 through a combat and we played Dust Speaker, then we could we could lose the game, you know? I'm not sure what does it, though. Like Crux of Fate. Yeah, we play this, then they play Crux of Fate. And it doesn't, it doesn't matter if we get to copy it because the card's worthless. And then we just draw every land in our deck after scrying, and then they play creatures, and it's like, okay, I mean, there is a there is a scenario where we lose if we have six through combat. So, could be having connection issues, could be having IRL issues, they have like a kid or something. I, I don't know O. Daniel Akos very well, so I, I don't know anything about this person. I know they grind, I've seen the, the handle a bunch of times, but no idea what's holding them up. Um, I suppose I could edit this part out of the video, but I probably won't. Just going to put the whole match up, including, I guess, the humorous bit of, oh, look, I'm double queuing, let me concede. But, I mean, this is high EV. This is high EV. So if we end up 2-1, okay, and we just attack and kill them. But if we end up 2-1, and one, then we just need to win two more matches and we're in the top eight. And 3-2 can make it, but we're not planning on 3-2, we're planning on 4-1. Uh, I, don't, <clears throat> I don't think we're going to change anything. Eliminate looks okay. Like, we, we swap Eliminate for Spiteful Squad the other game. Uh, if they're, like, a, bi a big green-black deck, Spiteful Squad is pretty decent, but... I think this card's a little sus, but we'll, we'll try not to run into Lash of Malice with it. We do have to be careful about Lash of Malice with the Guiding Voice, but I'm not going to cut it. I think we'll be able to find a time for it. I like all the Learn cards. I like the Splash. I definitely like Lorehold Excavation if we're going to have Board Stalls. Uh, this card's probably fine against green-black. So I think I'll just run everything the exact same. I don't expect to sideboard all that much with this deck in general. But, <clears throat> yeah. Could be wrong. I think, think we'll basically be fine here. And then maybe we'll change like this for Eliminate or something if Eliminate looks terrible. But it looked good there. Uh, we're going to be on the draw this game. <clears throat> I assume. I assume we're going to be on the draw, but that's fine. So, hope we get to play a nice game of Magic. Uh, we drew very well that game. Our, our opener was good, too. Like, we had a good opener. We're like, yep, shock, three drops, and something else that's totally fine. I mean, Divine Gambit in the opener is pretty bad. But if you look at that as, like, a six-hard hand, it's a very good six. So I definitely would never mulligan in three lands, three drops, shock, and Divine Gambit. But we're going to keep Divine Gambit in. Um, I guess we could cut this card sometimes. Like, if they... If this card's really interesting because the more, like, if you can if you can hit a bookworm with it, it's really good. If you can hit a bookworm or a dragon or something like that, this is a clean answer to all those things. But if you end up hitting anything else there and they plop it in, you can just lose the game. So, the best Divine Gambit is one that gets cast late game. But our deck can definitely hang late game. Like, for a red-white deck, we have a lot of card advantage. So, and this this is a 3-drop. This is not a 4-drop. So, this is our actual curve. We have, like, a good number of 5s. Uh, this is not a 3-drop. You should never play Explore the Vastlands. Like, ever. The card is just, a, it's abysmal, don't play it, just, this is a 5-drop, you know? But, yeah. And the, one thing I really like about our deck is because of the first day of classes, 
we have like a lot of looks at land three and I guess land four by extension. So it's very unlikely that we just keep a two-lander in brick and never draw land three because we can just first day of class, groan, and go get the environmental sciences. We actually have two environmental sciences, but we're probably never going to use the second one. I don't know, maybe there's a universe where you like main deck a second sciences over the 17th land or something, but we, you know, like, or main deck a sciences, like cut a land for sciences and just play play more spells, which makes your pledge mages better. I haven't really experimented with that. That could be okay. It makes this a little better. Uh, but you also have to pay for the sciences, though. It makes the Tome Shredder a tiny bit better. It's mostly for the Pledge Mages. But I'm just on 17 lands. I haven't really hated 17 lands in this format. Uh, this, because of the campuses and all the all the learn cards, there's more to do with your mana. So hitting land drops is important. Uh, you can definitely lose games to Mana Flood, especially in Black White. Uh, Red White secondary. Red White can lose games to Mana Flood, but not as bad as Black White. But yeah, so they just they ran out the entire clock of their sideboard. They might be AFK again. But we'll see what happens here. Uh, I really do want a top eight, but, you know, I'm an adult. It's Magic the Gathering. If it doesn't go my way, you know, no, no sense in crying over it. It's very much very much how the game works. There's variance. There's misplays. There's things like that. But definitely interested in uh, getting going the distance. You know, I want to go the distance. I want to get the top prize. The guy in my chat uh, last night won the vintage one. A guy named Slasher was awesome. He won the vintage one. He won $20,000 in the vintage MOCS playing shops. So if you're watching this slasher, you know, excellent job, man. Really, really good job. But <clears throat> oh, my cat's there. Yeah, they're taking a lot of time. I think this is going to work in my favor. Like, <clears throat> I, I, I don't really like laming people out, especially, especially not on a video, you know, where you're like sack to novice dissector, scry in main phase. Like, you know, where you're just trying to take arbitrary game actions to time your opponent out. But if you're not taking arbitrary game actions and they want to do this and you win by clock, like, it's basically their fault. I don't know what's causing this. It could be something tragic IRL. I have no idea. But I'm not going to like... <laughs> I'm not going to cry poetic for it, you know. Uh, yeah, this this is a slow hand, but we are going to keep it because we have basically two rares. Two cards that are well above average in card quality. Like, I don't think there's really any realistic curve out that kills us on turn four or whatever. So if this is our first play of the game and we just draw lands, that's the worst case scenario. But... <clears throat> You know, so be it. And if we draw anything to play beforehand, the hand gets a lot better. And the thing is, we can, like, learn, go get earlier plays, so... And if we draw lands, too, we get to play Warhol Command this game. Like, we're not going to be dead on turn 5. If we're dead on turn 5, I'll be shocked. Because I'm thinking about him, like, oh, Damagoth Titan? Like, yeah, Damagoth Titan. Like, 2-drop, 3-drop, Damagoth Titan, removal spell on this, kill me. It's possible. It exists. It's not... I, I mean, I don't have any evidence it's going to happen. But there is a universe where we die on turn 5 or something. So I guess we should acknowledge that possibility. But I don't think it's going to happen. I mean, we didn't even see Demigod Titan, but they are the, they are the kind of deck that would play Demigod Titan. So. Oh, I'm so fucking nervous, man. I'm so fucking nervous. Just 20,000. I just want it. I want it so bad. I want it so bad. I want to. I want my name just blazing across, you know, the, the uh, pantheon of limited players, of limited grinders. You know, take magic from a semi job to like a basically, I guess, a real job. Like once you made twenty thousand, you're just like, well, you know, I, I did it, I made it. You know, but we're not there yet. We're not even, we're not even in the top eight. We might not even top eight. We can just lose two matches and then we don't make the top eight. Although I guess like some three twos could make it. I'm not even gonna look at the leaderboard right now because I assume losing round one really hurts my breakers unless my opponent like, well, I, they could win out. I could lose round one, they go five zero or something, and then that helps my breakers. But <clears throat> I don't know. Oh uh, yeah, I mean this is only game two, and they only have ten minutes left. We have we have more than double the amount of time they have. So really, all we need to do this game, we probably don't even need to win. We just need to survive, and then they're gonna die to clock, especially if they keep doing this. But like I said, if I'm if I'm losing uh, game three here, and there's like a minute left, I'll try to just die with dignity and not do the whole uh, novice dissector main phase thing where you're like. Or you, you just AFK for 15 minutes, and then you finally pass priority abruptly, and then you AFK for 10 minutes, and then, you know, like, that sort of thing. I'm not going to do that. I'll just take my, I'll take my licks, I'll take my loss, I'll be a man about it. But at the same time, like, I I think that this might just be a clock victory. Like, I can already see the writing on the wall. This is, uh, I mean, we've only played seven, or what, eight turns of magic? <laughs> eight turns of magic and uh, 20, I guess I should ask my opponent what what's going on. They mulligan to five. Ooh. 
So maybe they were just deliberating that hand, and it was just like a brutal, uncapable hand, too. Well, that's good, but I mean, five cards can still be a turn four Damagot Titan, right? Like, we can still die exactly like I described, and then die game three in record time. So, don't rest on our laurels, don't play swappy, don't do not do anything stupid, but we're going to keep this hand, obviously, and then they're on five cards, which is good for us. Uh, my cat is here to check out the situation. So hopefully the monologue's enjoyable, just talking about all sorts of aspects of the tournament, competition, myself, my opponent's clock, yada yada. But I could cut this out, probably just leave it. Okay, just want to make sure I didn't F6 through my turn. That's a fine draw. Won't cast it on turn three though, because you know we will be moving to hand size anyways, and they have two drop. Yeah. Oh, we we just drew our two drops. So drew the perfects. Just snap trading. Always trade when your opponent mulligans to five. Just always trade. Okay. So we're we're not going to stress about proliferate. We're just going to cast the divination to make sure we hit all our lands. We're done. Yeah, we're not proliferating. Uh, so we can't block here if they play a land. But we don't know if they have land five, so we should leave it back. They have lash. No, they have white. Humiliates. Okay. So that's actually very good. But I think our hand's pretty robust. I imagine they just have to take lore hold command. Also, my cat just did an adorable meow, but you probably can hear that. So, like I said, our main concern is not dying. Like, in fine time, I would just snap off Lore Hole Command. Just take it. <clears throat> so, they just take Lore Hole Command, and they can attack us for 3. We're going to 15. If we play Effigy, they can actually kind of go all in on this stupid thing. And they know we have to defend the campus, so... The, uh, the game of chicken is not really all that favorable for us. So I think what we're actually going to do is we're just going to get, we're just going to Phoenix. We're going to go get Environmental Sciences. And that way we can just play out our hand. Because if they're dumping mana into this, it does hit pretty hard. But I don't think it's going to kill us, like, necessarily. So. Go get Sciences. Attack with these two. We're not double blocking because land, land 5 is a 6-6. Six, six. Uh, if they just go all in, all in on the 6-6, six, six, we can chump it for a bit. Probably not going to just lose to a single Amplomancer. I guess that could happen, but... I don't expect it to. Like, we definitely, we have removal in hand, by the way. We have the campus, which they're, like, perfectly sized under. Uh, we also have the break glass in case of emergency with first day of class for uh, that memory card. So I think we just do this. We're going to get a swamp. We're going to play the pledge mage, and then we'll just attack, I guess. There's no flash creatures, so we'll just attack right now. Yeah. So they know most of our hand. They know, like, all these cards. They don't know the Guiding Boys, but... Yeah. Uh, no blocks. Just go to, go to 8 if they have it. We have lifelink on this. So we can get a lot of life back. Be pretty crazy if they just go all in on this but i guess if their hand does nothing else they might have to i don't think it's gonna work but like what, what could they do they could have like um we could try to race them in a pure race and then they end up having this plus like uh what's that fortifying drought and then they make it five and then they double it to ten so we could take like ten damage in a turn potentially or not ten yeah no it is ten because it goes land six yeah So I think we just cast this for lifelink, and then we go get the 3-2, play it with haste, and attack. Uh, we're not dead to this, right? I don't think there's... Like, what is the biggest one-mana pump spell that we can... <sighs> you know, like, we just have to think about, like, what kills us. Like, you know, EOT, put counters on this, untap, you know, pump spell us for a million, kill us or something. Doesn't seem real, but... I mean, we could also just hold up defend the campus if we're scared of this thing. I mean, we're also, like, we could even just try to win the game with Defend the Campus. Like, we have this, and... So this is 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. It's not quite lethal. Uh, we could also just go get another Environmental Sciences. Like, that's that's the path of the coward, though. But, I mean, it's not terrible. I kind of like being cowardly because our hand is so good. And the only way we lose this game is just cheese. You know, we just get cheesed out by this by this Amplomancer. 
<clears throat> and we can take our time a little bit because we have so much time in the clock. We're not laming them out for clock. Their clock's not ticking right now, so we're not being rude. But at the same time, like, what do we do? We can go get, um, we can also just go kill this now, make it a 3-2. But I don't, I don't think it's that realistic for us to die to this. Like, the, the biggest pump spell for one mana is plus two, plus two. And then if they do that, it goes to five and then they could double it to ten, but we're at eleven. And we're going to gain life from this, assuming it gets to attack them. Like, that's that's the variance that I'm trying to figure out right now, is like, is this going to be able to attack? Uh, if we if we play first day of class, then, like, it's not <clears throat> it's not lethal. It's, like, it's close to lethal. They get, they're at one. They're at one if they have nothing. Uh, we know they have the Lash, too. So if we go to Guiding Voice, they could Lash us. They have Deadly Brew. They have the Mage Hunter's Onslaught. God, it's like a fucking thing. I think they have an instant. So let's just cast first day of class and see what they do. I think we're going to get the 3 2. Definitely choose lifelink. I mean, anatomy is like the go for it card, but let's just get the life. Let's get the creature. Let's play it. Choose flying, I guess, in case they have 10 in the pass. And it gets haste. And then I. It's like, I'm such a coward. I don't want to die to this stupid thing. I don't want to die to, like, some idiotic pump spell sequence. So why don't we just, like, do this? Or something. I mean, we can't double block it. Obviously, attacking with everything isn't that bad. But they, like, EOT kill this. Yeah, so we'll just do this. We're going to be a coward. Closing statement? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, see, so they are actually in a setup where they, they had put a counter on the uh, Amplomancer, but they can't, like, play two kill spells and pump this. I don't I don't think there's a way we die to this card, but we are chump blocking it. Oh, my cat's making adorable noises. That's really cute. But, yeah, I, I guess we'll just chump it with the Phoenix, sure. They don't really have that many cards left. Very strange game, very unfortunate game that... I've never seen this card be this good, but there's just the fear of death has been put into us, okay. Uh, we actually have lethal. Alright, we just have lethal. Let's just do that. So we just learn this instead. And then we go defend the campus, kill the dog, and attack them. There. Yeah. Alright, they're dead. So, <clears throat> they, they had an interesting thing. They had, like, a little bit of fear in us. But this card is very clunky to use. The uh, the doubling aspect of this card comes on late game, not early. So it, it's, it was unlikely that that was going to work. But all we had to do was think, like, how do we die here, you know? Yeah, I can reveal my hand. Yeah, their hand's good. Their deck didn't look bad, I guess. But they didn't really have any 8-plus draws. Like, they mulled to 5 that game. That was a pretty decent 5-card hand, honestly. Like, they had a 2-drop. They had letter. They had things to do afterwards. But, like, I think they made a play every turn of the game, right? Like, after that, they went this, letter. Uh, I think they... Humiliate, rough, closing statement. So yeah, they basically made a play every turn. Uh, they were basically out of things to do, though. So, uh, My cat's just making noises. But anyways, that doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter about the cat. It doesn't matter about the games. We're 2-1, and one, so I'm going to end the VOD here. Uh, the next match will be up soon, I think. Let's actually just see how long it is. Okay, it'll be up in a little bit. I'm not going to double queue. I don't think I have time. But stay tuned. Check out the next video. Thank you so much. Bye.